Hey friends, welcome back to Virtual Sunday School. Today we're talking about the Exodus, how with the help of God, Moses was able to part the Red Sea into two. So stick around as we dig deeper into how God protected and guided the Israelites, even though they doubted him. All right, I want you to imagine that you're going on a trip and you need to figure out where you're going and how you're gonna get there. There could be a few options on how to guide you. One of those options might be a paper map. It, it is an option. Um, another one could be using a compass to lead and guide you. I suppose another one is certainly using a phone, using the GPS system on there. So out of these three options, which one would you choose and why? I suppose probably most of you chose the phone. I mean, that's how everyone does it these days, right? Although some people who are a little more confident might use a paper map or a compass, depending on where you're going and what you're doing. Well, let's take a listen to today's Bible story about the Exodus and the Israelites and see how God led them through the desert and led them away from the Egyptian army. Welcome back. It's Mr. Kurt. Welcome to Kurt's Corner. Today's reading is from Exodus 14. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of the Phi Haroth, between Migdal and the sea, in front of Basaphon. And you shall encamp facing it by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, They are wandering in the land. The wilderness has shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his host, and all Egyptians shall know that I am Lord. And they did so. When the king of Egypt was told that his people had fled, the mind of Pharaoh and his servants was changed toward the people. And they said, What is this we have done? We have let Israel go from serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with them. And he took 600 chosen chariots and all other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And he pursued the people of Israel while the people of Israel were going out defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen and his army and overtook them and camped by the sea of Phi Harath and in front of Baal Zephon. When Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians were matching, marching after them, and they feared greatly, and the people of Israel cried out. They said to Moses, Is it because there are no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt, leave us alone that we may serve the Egyptians. For it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians who you see today, you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be silent. The Lord said to Moses, why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your staff and stretch it out over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go through the sea on dry ground. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go in after them. And I will get glory over Pharaoh and all of his hosts, his chariots, and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots, and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who was going before the host of Israel, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud and the darkness, and it lit up the night without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back 
by strong east winds all night and the sea and made the sea dry land and the waters were divided and the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left the Egyptians pursued them and went in after them in the midst of the sea all the Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in a pillar of fire and of a cloud looked down on the Egyptian forces and threw the Egyptian forces into panic, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us flee from before Israel, for the God fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch your hand out over the sea, that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its normal course when the morning appeared. And as the Egyptians fled into it, the Lord threw the Egyptians into the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and all the horsemen of all the host of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not one of them remained. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great power that the Lord used against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant, Moses. All right, so there's a few things I want to talk about today in regards to the scripture reading that Mr. Kurt just read. But first, I want to ask, what would it have been like for you to walk through the walls of water of the Red Sea? Put yourself in the shoes of the Israelites and think, what would that have been like? I think that would have been pretty awesome to walk through water. I mean, that would have been amazing. It doesn't really happen today. All right, so let's take a look at some other things. In the first part of today's reading, we see this idea of God hardening Pharaoh's heart. And so I want you to grab your Bibles and open up to Exodus 14 verses 1 through 14 and see if you can figure out why God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Pharaoh certainly did a bit of work on his own um, in hardening his own heart, but God also hardened it a bit more. And you think, why would God do that? Wouldn't he want to soften it, make it more loving? Well, God knew that Pharaoh was going to reject him as God. And so God used this as an opportunity to deliver his people, to teach them that he was the one true God. Now, there was certainly doubt in the minds of the Israelites. They didn't think God was going to pull through. They didn't think they were going to become free from the Egyptian army. And so what sort of comfort did Moses give them? And what sort of comfort does God give us today? Moses told the people that God was going to fight for them. He was going to pull through. All they had to do was wait. We see in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, For by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is a gift of God, not a result of works, so that no one may boast. All the Israelites had to do was wait. They didn't have to do anything. In fact, they couldn't do anything. We can't do anything on our own without God, and we certainly can't get to heaven and have eternal life and salvation because of what we do. That all comes from trusting in our good Lord, the one who is all-powerful and has the ability to save us from our sin. So I want you to open up to one more section. In fact, it's right after what we just looked at. It's Exodus 14, 15 through 31. And I want you to take a look at how God delivered his people. There are two ways that we're looking at. And so I want you to take a look and see if you can find those.
One of the ways that God delivered his people was by providing a pillar of cloud and a pillar of fire to guide them on the ground while they were crossing the Red Sea. This kept Egypt in the dark, but gave light to the Israelites so that they could see where they were going. The other way that God delivered his people was by ultimately setting them free. They made their way through the Red Sea, and when the Egyptian army was making their way through, God made the walls of the Red Sea come crashing down on them. Therefore, Israelites were free. And the Egyptian army was defeated. So you might be wondering, well, what does this have to do with me? I mean, I wasn't there at the Red Sea. I wasn't crossing through it with the Israelites. The Egyptian army wasn't chasing after me. Well, for me, I can easily relate to this story. I mean, just like the Israelites were running away from the Egyptians, Sometimes I feel like I'm running away from something too, something that I can't run away from fast enough. I feel like sometimes sin is just running after me and there's no way that I can get out of its grip. And also like the Israelites and how they didn't fully trust God, sometimes I have a hard time fully trusting God, fully trusting that he is there for me and with me and present in my life. Well, I wanna promise you, that even though sometimes we doubt God and feel like he isn't there, he is. There's not a single time in our life that God has left our side. I mean, he is with you right now. He's with me right now. God is always with us. And even when we feel like we can't run away from something fast enough, God is scooping us up into his loving arms. And we don't have to worry about that. That's why Jesus went to the cross, to save us from our sin, to save us from the grip of Satan. My friends, you are set free. We are all set free from the power of sin, death, and the devil. And there is no greater news than that. So let's check out today's memory verse, which tells us exactly what we need to do when we feel like we are in those situations, when we feel like we are trapped or scared or worried. Let's check it out. Today's memory verse comes to us from Psalm 50, verse 15. It says, Call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver you. Call upon me. Our Lord wants us to call upon his name. He just says, call me. Call my name and I'm there. He wants to hear from you. And so make sure that you are being in conversation with our Lord. He wants to hear your voice. He wants to hear your, your praises and thanks, but he wants to hear your troubles and your worries and your anxieties too. So be sure that you rest upon our Lord. Lean into him. He's there for you and he wants to hear everything you have to say. Everything. I mean everything. So don't hold back. Speak to our Lord today and give him all of the things on your heart. So as you go about the rest of your day and your week, the rest of this time of COVID and, and even beyond that, I want you to rest assured that our God is with you. He is present in your life. He knows everything about you and he knows the plan he has for you. And so take hold of that, trust in that, that our God is bigger bigger than anything we could ever imagine. And he is holding you in his loving arms. Take some time to pray today, and we will see you next week.